Welcome to the Escaping the Accountant's Trap podcast. It's a podcast to help accountants, CPAs, and bookkeepers escape what we call the accountant's trap. It's where accountants are not getting paid for their value and are forced to work long hours with high demanding clients with little pay. Well, how do you escape the trap? One way is the topic of today's episode, and that's by buying and selling accounting firms. To help me with the discussion, I've invited Jason Blummer, the CEO of Thrival, an organization that helps countercultural accountants and bookkeeping firm owners embrace their entrepreneurial side. Jason, welcome yeah. to the show. Cool. Adam, thanks for having me. I'm pumped to be here. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. So Jason, I'm excited to, I'm excited about this episode because we're going to yeah. talk about how to, you know, buying and selling yeah. accounting firms and yeah. whether or not you should buy and or sell yeah. your accounting firm. But yeah. first, I want to talk about the sort of the, the mission of Thrival. You talk about helping counter-cultural mm. accounting and bookkeeping firm owners yeah. sort of embrace their entrepreneurial side. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Well, our Thrival is for entrepreneurs. We are for service-based entrepreneurs. That's kind of, we're an entrepreneurial care organization, we like to say sometimes. So Thrival typically, uh, it just attracts brands that are not traditional in nature. So they don't really struggle with cloud technology, pricing, you know, virtual. They're just... They'll try, you know, if they want to offshore, they'll go try it. So they're just not really scared. So, so we, we love those countercultural firm owners, um, you know, and then the rest of our tagline is them embracing really their, their creativity within the profession. We believe mm. all entrepreneurs are creative. They have to be innovative. And yeah. so we love it when they come in and they're trying new things, wrecking stuff. A lot of times they're messing up things. Um, and we love that because we're, that's what we're all trying to do, figure out entrepreneurship together so yeah and i and I, I feel like this is so important especially in the accounting space mm. because there's a lot of people a lot of firms that yeah. are that are, are not countercultural. they're they're trying to hang on to yeah. what has worked for the past 50 years yeah. and a lot of people aren't responding to it yeah no i think cl yeah clients are moving around now they're, yeah. they're they're moving from firm to firm uh, and so the traditional firms, the ones that are really locked up in a lot of old school methodologies are mm. the clients are just going to, they're going to leave them over time. Yeah. I think, I think private equity coming in, starting to buy up firms is really going to bring a competitive way in which, you know, because the, the private equity people are going to run a firm like a business. That's, mm. that's, that's all they care about. They're running businesses. And so yeah. they're going to start to challenge the, all of us other really long-term traditional professionals to really step up our game. So that might be good long-term. Um, but yeah, clients are not gonna, they're not gonna put up with poor, poor business models um, over the next five to seven years for sure. Yeah. Well, let's get into sort of the topic of today's episode, which is buying yeah. and selling accounting firms. So, so first of all, why is this such a mm -mm. hot topic? Yeah. Well, I think, um, I think at post pandemic. So, you know, we, we talk a lot about post pandemic, a lot of people in the pandemic really went through such a traumatizing time. Mm -hmm. Um, but it did force us all to do things and let's rethink our business models, rethink mm -hmm. how we want to commit to that. And I think now couple that with a difficult economy, people are actually making decisions about leaving the profession or changing what they're doing. So, now they're just they're not going to keep doing what they're doing because it's pre it's been pretty difficult. So we're kind of pushing people out of their their, you know, their mode of rest and not making decisions and saying it's time to actually move forward and do something. Mm. Uh, and then when you have private equity coming in, it is buying up a lot of larger or mid market firms. And it's making us all think, well, OK, we have to make some decisions about what we're going to do. So I think it's a couple of things post pandemic. Uh, you know, the private equities coming in, bringing money in uh, to buy. Uh, and then people, you know, have dealt with their own work issues and they're ready to actually make decisions uh, to buy, sell, merge, things like that. OK, so let's start with the, the private equity companies, mm. specifically, who are they and why are mm. they buying accounting firms? Yeah, that's that's a good point. I think um, there these are people that may or may not have uh, a background in accounting firm operations. Okay. Uh, they may, a lot of them may have operate, operated service-based organizations. Um, so we know some of them and it's typically, 
Um, they're just professional business operators is basically what they are. And they have a large fund of cash behind them that wants them to buy up businesses that can be profitable. Mm. Um, and they're, they're starting to come after accounting firms because we are a great uh, model of a business. We don't go away. Uh, even during a recession, we don't go away. Um, it's, um, it's got a little bit of a moat around it, right? So you kind of have to have some technical ability to get into this business. Mm. Uh, so it has a little bit of protection uh, around it. Um, and they're just, they're just generally profitable. Uh, you can run them really profitable. Uh, or, you know, m most people run them, you know, pretty break even, maybe, a, you know, a five, seven, 10 percent margin on the bottom line or something like that. Uh, so they're just great business models, consistent. And also, I think private equity is seeing that we have not run our firms very well. <laughs> OK. And, and so private equity knows how to do that. They're experts in running a business, not the accounting side. They're like so they're actually buying up uh, other businesses too, engineering companies. Uh, just technical professions that don't know how to run businesses, they're going to buy them up and run the technical proficiency of those mm. teams through the model. And they're going to start charging. They're going to start making money. They're going to update. They're going to use software. They're going to go virtual. They're going to run things in a more modern way. Um, and we're a great model of a business to buy and tweak and change uh, and just make money. And then a lot of them are buying smaller ones and they're combining them. And then they're rolling them up to another private equity. They're reselling them too. So they're they're just we're just very attractive profession right now for them. So so what are the types of accounting firms that they're looking for? Because and here's why I ask that. Well, there's a lot of accounting firms. A lot of people listening maybe that right. this is their accounting firm. It's it's really the accountant or the bookkeeper that that has the relationships mm. with everybody. So yeah, is that who are they? Yeah. So if, are they buying those mm. types of firms and they're really just buying the book of business or are they yeah. looking for firms that mm. is not revolving around one person? Yeah. Yeah. They, they definitely want to buy a business that doesn't need the owners to run it. Okay. So they are looking at larger firms. They're looking at, you know, typically 10 million in revenue and up is kind of okay. what they want to buy. Um, we're not that big. We're a, we're a smaller firm. So we're not really an acquisition target. And most firms are not. Most firms are not 10 million and up. So they're really buying what we would call larger businesses. Mm. And when they do that, those automatically, the owners are not running the business typically. Now, some traditionally are embedded in a lot of those, those models, uh, but they can buy that business and pretty much uh, whatever the owners were taken out. Because in our profession, owners siphon a lot of cash out of their, their traditionally their businesses. That's how they've done it. Yeah. They've run the business to drain it of its cash and pay its partners. And that's not a great investment model. It doesn't let you scale an organization very well. So they're going to buy it and get all that, you know, that comp from those owners. They're going to get it back. It's going to hit the bottom line mm. uh, and they're going to start, you know, running. More. They're not going to rely on the owner as much as the owner stayed involved in client work. They're going to actually run a business, set up layer structure, leadership teams, uh, and then you can have an organization, a service organization, kind of run, run, uh, not totally on its own, but run without the partner's involvement as much. And they can, they can pull some profit out of that because they're not paying such high comp out to those founding partners. Is there a market for firms that are doing less than hmm. 10 million annual revenue? Yeah, well, there are, yeah, I think there's all kinds of private equity uh, models out okay. there. Uh, most of them, if they really know what they're doing, they're trying to buy up larger ones, package them or run them, run them together. Um, so we, we've we been approached by other ones that um, some just want to, uh, they have a fund behind them, some kind of private equity fund, and they want to buy a firm and operate it, just that firm. And so we've been approached to do that, you know, just to buy our firm, buy just our firm and run our firm uh, because we have a strong brand, a great history, uh, a, a deep niche, a lot of advisory, you know, all those things make it make it more valuable. Uh, and I, and my partner and I, we're involved in our firm. We are involved in it, but it can run. Um, you know, we have a leader, strong leadership team. All of that stuff makes it valuable. So. Is some models will buy a smaller firm, but most of them are not interested in us in a small firm really right now.
Hey there, Adam here from the Escaping the Accountant's Trap podcast. I'd like to personally invite you to a free masterclass that we're conducting this Thursday called How to Start a CFO Service. To register, just go to thecfoproject.com and click free training at the top. See you then. Let's touch on what makes a firm valuable to a potential buyer. You mentioned yeah. a couple of things. Yeah. Um, what what would what would be sort of the top yeah. you know few things that a firm yeah. who somebody listening mm. that wants to possibly get their business ready for sale? Yeah. What do for they sure. need to put in place? Yeah. Well, um, uh, yeah, a lot of things. So a firm operating by itself uh, without the partner is very helpful. Um, okay. So. Uh, we like to talk about the growth of firms in terms of team sizes. So three to five team sizes is a range where that owner is really still deeply embedded in a lot of the client service. Mm. Um, and so that's not really a purchasable business, probably, because it's just really still the owner. Uh, yeah. Then when you get to about five to eight people, uh, uh, you know, inching up to 10, 10, 12 people, uh, you want an organization, really, if you're that large, you have to really, you have to have built some pretty strong software and process uh, that runs a lot of this, uh, the revenue generation in that company. So if you're, if you're an owner or a partner and you got about five or eight people and you still haven't devoted a lot of work to uh, the right workflow software or processes, then you're hitting, you're going to hit a gross ceiling. You just can't, you can't grow past that if it all relies on the head of the owner. Um, so about five to eight, that's where you got to start seeing yourself move out of the service of the revenue. And you got to see the processes and the software kind of move that team along. Uh, some do it well, some don't, but at least the software and the processes have to move that team along without you telling them what to do. And then when you're hitting up in 12, you know, uh, 15 people, uh, you want to find the owners definitely out of any revenue, you know, related work, typically out of any client facing work. It doesn't mean we don't talk to our clients, uh, but during pricing, selling and during renewing our contracts, that's when my partner and I get involved. And then we also do a lot of our own advisory coaching and consulting. Mm -hmm. That stuff we will do, my partner and I and the team are running the finance uh, sides of the businesses, the tax. And when they struggle, the leadership team is helping them. And that's kind of right. what you want to build. And it makes you more of an, an attractive target. Mm. Yeah, that it makes sense. It takes years to get there, though. It does take time to get there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's one of the things we do recommend for for a lot of the accounting and, firm, and bookkeeping firm owners that we talk to that wants to get out of maybe the compliance transactional side of things, mm -hmm. but will still keep that book of business is to yeah. delegate it. And then you focus on being yeah. the advisor. Yeah. which is, uh, you know, higher, higher value service to your clients anyways. Yeah. yeah. Well, and so we would say to anybody who, who does want to grow you so services companies, they, they only grow by leveraging people. Mm. Um, so if you want to grow, you are going to have to hire people. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you're a solopreneur and you're really just on the cusp of hiring that first person, that's a growth move, hire, yeah. figure it out, figure out. Cause you, then you're going to have to keep them busy. And it's like, I don't know what to tell them to do, but you'll yeah. figure it out because you're paying them and then you get better at it and then you create new roles and then you create layers like leadership teams. And then you can really structure up a company that can run over time. And it takes years to, to uh, figure of course. it out. Yeah. You know? Interesting. Yeah. So let's, let's flip it is buying a accounting firm, if you're, if somebody owns an accounting firm or a bookkeeping mm -hmm. firm and they want to grow through acquisition, mm -hmm. is that prudent? Yeah. And, and when would it be prudent? Yeah, it, it, it can be. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's very disruptive. We, you know, what we'll do is we'll roll in just small firms into our firm. And it's, it's helpful because when you roll in a group of 20, 30, 40, 50 clients and you get a couple of strong people that come in with that firm, Mm -hmm. Um, it's the client base is not the thing we're buying as much anymore. That used to be all that we would buy is a client base, but you know, okay. with marketing and the cloud, you know, every, you know, all of that digital work is very ubiquitous. We can go get our own clients now. So a lot of times we're just eliminating little firms out of the market mm -hmm. and we're wanting those people, those leaders to come into our firm. Um, 
And so when you do that, it's just somewhat, it's pretty disruptive. Um, so it's just a pain in the butt to roll <laughs> in, you know, 30 clients into your firm while everybody's still serving their clients. And so our leadership team will do that. They'll do a lot of the legwork of contracting, drafting, mm. meeting these new people. Uh, and we'll lead, my partner and I will lead a little bit on training some of the new team. Um, so it, it can be pretty disruptive to do. So you want to you, you wanna do it when you're not overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> you want to do it when you have some time to devote to it. Mm. For sure. That's what's, what's, what's interesting is you almost made it sound like you roll in these smaller firms, not necessarily for their clients, but for their talent. Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. That, so yeah, how, do you, how do you identify who mm. to, to buy? Well, that's a, that's a good, <laughs> it really, that's a networking move, you know, so okay. we're in, Thrival is an organization that's always serving firm owners, accounting firm owners mm -hmm. all over the U S and Canada. And we've had a podcast for, you know, f you know, 13 years. And so we just, we just know people, know firms. So a lot of times they'll reach out and go, I am done, man. I'm done with yeah. this. And you're, and you can start having conversations or, we can know really strong people that have a solopreneur based business or maybe one other person and we'll approach them and we'll say you, the, the person you are is a role we're about to fill. We would mm. love to just feel it, fill it with, with you coming into the firm. If that works out for you, uh, some people are interested, some are not. Um, so that, so that's a lot of networking. Um, but then the other route is to go to a marketplace, right? Po Group Advisors, to go to a place that has firms for sale. Uh, that also works. What was uh, that? Po Group Advisors? It's Po, P-O-E. Okay. Uh, po Group Advisors is, you know, it's a well-known uh, well consultancy that's, you know, helps people buy and sell firms all over the U.S. and Canada. Um, so you can go to a marketplace and pick one and buy that one. Um, Interesting. And, and that works. That works too. Some people go in there, some private equity are purchasing from Poe Group of Advisors. Brandon Poe is the, the founder there. Yeah. And so there, some people are just buying multiple firms in there and kind of wrapping them together. It's interesting. Yeah. That They're is just dumping them into one big firm. Wow. Which interesting. Is, so you've wild. mentioned Thrival a few times. Tell us more about your organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Thrival is something I started about 12 years ago and it's, I've been running my firm for about 20 years. Uh, so about, about 10 years in, I was, I was just trying a lot of stuff, a lot of consulting and uh, things like that um, and started finding people. And again, this was 10 years ago. So I was just now finding CPAs on Twitter, uh, things like that when there was just four <laughs> or five CPAs on Twitter. Right, right. Um, and we started talking and we would start helping each other. We'd call each other on the phone. Um, and I, I just thought we need a community. We need we need an organized way to be together. Mm. Um, and so I I started it. It was I, you know, I didn't know what a community was. I just wanted, I just knew I wanted to be with people, but they came in and we started. Uh, you know, do an education, they would want education. And so now it's just a, uh, it's kind of, it's an organization that's been around for a long time. So. Wow. Yeah. All right. And, and what, what is yeah. the website just in case yeah. somebody wants to check it yeah. out? Yeah. It's thrival.com. So it's okay. the word thrive, T-H-R-I-V-E, and then add A-L.com on the end. So it's, I don't know, it's not phonetically pronounced. <laughs> People get, get it wrong and that's okay. <laughs> Right, and we'll definitely put that in the show note. Cool. In the show notes, so that so that somebody can check it out. Um, as we're winding down here, mm -hmm. where do you where is the accounting profession going? So somebody mm -hmm. listening that owns an accounting firm mm -hmm. or a bookkeeping firm, what well, what's it going to look like in the next five to yeah. ten years? Yeah, I guess anytime we have situations like, I mean, I've I've been in my profession for thirty years now, so I have seen some ups and downs by now. So there are patterns to these things. Mm -hmm. uh, thankfully, it's cool to be able to look back and go, hey, this is not going to wreck us or anything. Um, but when, when we're in places like this, and I listed a couple of the layers, right? We're post-pandemic, trying to figure out what does our work life look like now? We've learned a little bit about our personal selves, right? We've all 
uh, going through therapy <laughs> now. So we're doing a lot of self-reflection, right? Private equity is coming in going, hey, I'm going to buy your business if you're not going to run it well. And so I think um, a lot of people are now, you know, they're there are a lot of opportunities. Of course, the economy too uh, is, you know, we're we're in a little bit of a downturn with the economy. And then we've got a lot of labor issues where mm. uh, the pipeline of people coming into accounting or people leaving our profession is just a huge deal. Yeah. All of these sound bad, but these are huge opportunities for us. Yeah. Really, really big opportunities. And so um, if you if you have the right eye for this, you can know that while everybody's worried and struggling, if I kick my marketing into gear, I really start operating this business on software processes and I really grow and hire the right people. Um, yeah, five, seven years, you're going to really be able to stand out as a pretty strong competitor. Uh, wow. So the accounting profession is never going away. Yeah, I agree. It's never going away. So it's so now's the time for you to kind of get entrenched to be in one of the strong ones and emerge in, you know, three, five, seven years as a very strong firm. Wow. Well, Jason, this has been a fantastic conversation. Cool. Thank you so much for coming on the yeah. show. Yeah. Thanks, Adam, for having me. This is a lot of fun. And to everyone listening or watching, thank you so much for spending the last few minutes with us as we discussed how to escape the accountant's trap. Bye for now.